But um, to explain the patch that I've got, the control forge here, uh, I'm going to be pressing the button, just trigger buttons. They're just acting as push buttons so I can step and trigger gates and things like that with it. This control forge is programmed to determine the frequency of an oscillator over here. So when you see a, right now it's zero volt, so it's not doing anything to the oscillator. These three satellites are configured to control the three different parameters of the Morpheus, frequency, morph, and transform parameters of that. And this fourth satellite is configured with the four possible signals, the three different waveforms out of the oscillator and a noise source over here. And it's acting as an analog switch using its control voltage through a feature to produce the, the signal for the Morpheus. And then I've got everybody hooked up so that all their sequencers are in sequence along with the filter sequencer of the Morpheus. So as I press a button, you know, the Morpheus will be changing that. Makes my life very easy. I don't have to twist knobs and things like that. So right now we're starting at the, you know, with, uh, with no sound, but just uh, over here you can see the, um, uh, the display of the Morpheus. One of the neat things Morpheus has is a real-time frequency response to display. So you can see the sort of frequency responses we can get out of a, a 14th order filter. That's a, it's got seven resonances and seven notches in the frequency response. And uh, the sound designers design a complex filter using that. What I've got up here is a flange dot four. If I put a little noise through it, get some nice flanging notchy wind noises here. If I step to the next filter, um, the way you control a filter in Morpheus is not like the traditional um, filters that you think of in, in analog sense. That, uh, um, because it's a 14th order filter, that would be 28 control voltages it would take to control that. That's just not going to happen. So instead what we do is we have sound designers and we actually are lifting the sound design off of the original EMU Morpheus. Um, the implementation is different, but the, the fundamental design behind the 289 cubes is the same. So a sound designer designs a cube by choosing eight different frequency responses and putting those at the corners of the cube. You can see the little fly flying around in the cube here. So I move us down to this corner. It's now a very base response down here. If I change the morph parameter going horizontally, that smoothly changes out into a nice flat series of notches. If I change in the other dimension, frequency dimension, that sweeps everything up in frequency here. And then the transform dimension in this case kind of changes the spreading of the notches. Now all of this is voltage controllable. The control voltages are sampled at the same audio sample rate. So you can audio rate, modulate, um, uh, just go absolutely nuts. What I'm doing here is I've got a 10 second, a 3 second, and a 1 second LFO just to sweep the thing all over the second gone. Awesome. Now Morpheus can do traditional synth filters as well, so here I've got, oops, what did I just do? Nope, I did the right thing. So here I've got an ADSR controlling the, actually the morph parameter here, and then a random control voltage changing the cue. So Similarly, we can do a high pass filter. But the most fun with Morpheus is when things get kind of crazy, so. Just hear all the wild sounds you can get out of one filter just as you're sweeping around. Another fun example over here. Yeah, oh yeah, it, it really helps you understand what's going on with the sound. Now this next example really isn't a filter, it's actually a recording made yesterday in Washington. <laughs> it's the 
inauguration speech. <laughs> Yeah, Morphia does uh, vocal sounds really, really well. So there's a lot of vowels and things like that. Eventually, I hope to put the, the, with this patch, be, have it speaking its name and being able to talk to you. But I couldn't quite get that quite together for, for this show here. We've got parametric equalizers as well. So this is just a, a sawtooth, thick sawtooth waveform coming through here. And you can just hear all of the handle variations you'll get off of one of the parametric equalizers. He's got a nice fast modulation on And there's a lot of structure in this if you listen to the... Now one of the things you, you, you'll see, I'll, I'll do it once more, happening up here, there's a, v, a triple bar VU meter here. The top bar is the input level, you can tell what's coming into the thing. Bottom bar is the output level. Um, and uh, we have sort of a soft saturation at the output, but it, there, you know, it, it, it's going to eventually reach the lay layers, and, and, and this will indicate when that happens. The middle bar in there is the level of the internal nodes of the filter relative to a, a point that we set that is where we begin to deliberately distort the internals of the filter. Same way the original Morpheus module, you know, that was a fixed point module. This one's being implemented in floating point math, but still the distortion was a big part of Morpheus. So that's, that's what we did there. So in this patch, you can see the internal nodes getting up into the red and begin to hear a little bit of the effect as I... <laughs> Go to the next patch. Next patch is a real simple filter. It's just a brick, brick wall, low pass filter, um, and uh, you can see that this, the name of this filter has a dot four at the end of it. The dot four filters in Morpheus, rather than being full cubes with eight points, they only have four points. They only have two dimensions in the original sound design. Um, the third dimension. Um, we always program it to do something, but it's like fading so that the filter's just going away or rotating the same plane so you get some kind of an effect. Um, so it's not that interesting. So by default, again, to understand Morpheus, the cubes come packaged with the with filter. You, you don't get the design cubes. That's a very difficult process. Um, but you do have a whole menu of parameters so you can um, adjust the CB gains where they center, the gain through the filter, um, and this distortion point can be adjusted. And yeah. finally, this last parameter down here, transform controls distortion. Since the transform parameter in these dot four filters isn't real useful, you can instead say, okay, I'll just fix the transform at some point, typically at its lowest point, the, 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 the front of the cube. And now I can use a control voltage to vary that distortion point so I can turn on and off the distortion with a control voltage. Yeah. So that's what we're going to do here. Um, press the right button here. So we've got this bri brick wall low pass. Um, and uh, if I just sweep it around. It's a fairly soft sweep there. As I start turning up the um, transform parameter here, we begin to Here now, that's a little distorted from what it was before. A little more distorted. that very familiar Morpheus frequency grabbing distortion that it's got. Um, so I've got one more here. This is a another dot four, but let me turn this down. So once again, you can go from these fairly subtle effects to these things that slap you in the face with the distortion. So that's a quick tour. We 
what, gone through maybe a dozen of the 289 filters, and every time I play with it, I get amazed as the, uh, you know, find some new sound. I mean, the, the, the inauguration one there I just discovered uh, yesterday morning and decided, okay, this is perfect for that day. <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah.